Hello, good afternoon. Thank you. As you can see, I'm Mark Pope. I'm a chairman of the NFU Environment Forum. Uh, but more importantly, as Chris said, I'm a farmer, an active farmer from Taunton in Somerset. Uh, and when I agreed to come and speak today, I thought this would fit in perfectly, that we probably might have finished our oilseed rate. We could probably be a couple of weeks ago away at the very least. However, the reality is we finished our rate a fortnight ago. We're now, as Chris said, harvesting our wheat today, and probably within a week we'll have finished everything. But uh, that's what we as farmers, we put up with that, we live with that. Um, a little bit about us, I say, I'm a farmer uh, just outside Taunton in Somerset, I farm just uh, part of the farms in the Blackdown Hills AOMB, uh, and I've worked with the Blackdown Hills AOMB over a number of years over various things, and I'll try and weave into what I'm talking about, some of the things I've done with them. Now, I'm not very good with these things, so I'll apologise now if it stays like that. I'll press it once. That's, you'll enjoy looking at that. It's not, much better than me to look at that. <laughs> now, farmers, we very much care for the wider environment. We're very much, we've created it and now maintain the very landscape that's very much valued by the AOMBs. Our members live and farm in the AOMBs, and we take pride in the surroundings and the fact that the landscapes, far from being entirely natural, an awful lot are man-made over centuries of farming. Managed by, by farmers through grazing, cropping, cultivation and management of boundaries, such as hedges and stone walls. Now, as we all know, the area of bees cover many iconic farm landscapes. Take the North Pennines. In the North Pennines, there are around 40% of the UK's upland hay meadows. The Cotswolds. Famous for its tourism, of course, it's made a huge impact on the economy. In 2016, there's something like a billion pounds worth put into the economy through tourism, providing tens of thousands of jobs. Now, people are going to the Cotswolds because of the beautiful landscape. And the first and foremost, for example, there's classic stone walls maintained by farmers. Take the Blackdown Hills where I farm. The hills support an extensive range of wildlife leading designations to 16 sites of triple, triple, triple SIs. Most of these are managed by farmers. Alongside that, our own farm, we've been involved in agri-environment schemes for well over 20 years. And uh, we were sort of encouraged into it. I always say, sort of, farmers, we sort of like to dip our toe in and gain confidence. And uh, I worked with an organisation, many of you know, called FWAG, Farming Advisory Group. Um, who encouraged me to get involved in um, doing something environmental on the farm. And we started very simply by improving a few hedges on the farm, nothing too onerous. And all the time, I was conscious that I run a business, I have to make a profit or try to, uh, and I didn't want what, that to impact on the bottom line, ultimately. Now, over a number of years, I've entered numerous schemes, and we're currently in the HLS ELS agreement. Uh, we've got margins around the whole farm, trying to improve the hedges, trying to improve the biodiversity. And I, what I would say to you A, O, and Bs is please go out and talk to your farmers and it's very much about getting people's confidence. We want to do more for the environment and where we, can, where we can, we will. But it's all about getting confidence and making sure it fits with our businesses. So please, please go and engage with them. The term public goods is a wide ranging and the role of farming delivering to the full breadth public goods needs to be recognised. Now the recent government's consultation, which we've heard a little bit about this morning, Health and Harmony, sought the views in the future, how we farm the land and the food we grow and the, real, and the state of our natural environment. In the consultation, the government acknowledged the full range of public goods that come from the land, the way it's managed uh, and the way it's managed it included environmental goods we so, so often hear about. Improved soil health, which we've heard about already today. And I, I'd like to sort of say, from I travel the whole breadth of the country, and there's a huge amount of work now going on within the industry. Farmers are really keen on looking after their soil. We want it to stay in the field, and we want to understand it more. We're, at home, we're doing a lot to try and build the organic matter in our soils. We farm particularly very heavy clay. Um, I always phrase it to people, it's a very friendly soil because if you walk on it in the winter, it loves for you to take it home with you. <laughs> but very much farmers are always keen to do more with their soil and understand it. And the other thing I think I must mention here, I spoke recently in London at the Sustainable Soils Alliance, and it's 
One thing that must be remembered is no two soils are the same. So be very careful what we do wish for. If we can't go out with a broad brush and say that will fix all soils, they've got to be raised, treated on their own merits and then the right management prescriptions for those soils. Now, government recognise the full range of public goods and they list unpinned sustainable food production, supplying high quality food production. Now, we all need to recognise the need for food production and land managed as a fundamental provision of public goods. And again, I can't stress that too highly. We've got to eat. Um, and I fully su support the idea of improve, you know, environment, improve the environment, etc. But we've got to be very careful. And it was talked about already today. If we're not very careful, if we get the wrong trade deal, what will happen is we'll be um, producing to higher environmental standards. However, a lot of our food will be coming across the water in boats from South America. Now, I don't think that's particularly uh, morally right, that we've got a brilliant country here. We can do both. We can do both bits. Um, we buy it from abroad cheaply. We'll destroy their environment and look after our own. So just remember that. You can help us very widely echo those voices and spread that word far and wide. Because there are certainly some people in government we talk to and we've heard it already today, we'd much rather it was bought from there. Um, we get it right here. We can have a sustainable agriculture, a sustainable environment that long term will be here for the benefit of our future generations. If we get it wrong, we could destroy South America. Then we've got to go and find the food from somewhere else. We may not be able to find it, or the price might be up here. So it's just one to remember. Now, the challenges to farmers in our and B's, I'll press this again so you can never better picture. <laughs> the challenges to farmers in AOBs and across the country is to maintain viable and sustainable businesses that deliver the desired public goods. Now as I've already said, first and foremost, farming is a business, or it should be. I very much view it that way, as a business. And it's about running a viable business now and in the future. And one thing our environment form, we're very strong, we have a saying, you cannot go green when you're in the red. So true. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not all about making a fast buck to the detriment of the environment, far from it. I want to hand on my farm to my son and future generations in a better place than it is today, and a lot of farmers do. As I say, it makes no sense to farm our soils irresponsibly. Uh, we need that soil to produce food for us year in year, we need that soil to deliver for the environment. And so we want to look after that soil, and I always say we want to try and keep it in the field. We know we're not perfect, we know some people get it wrong. Every industry has got bad apples in it, and we accept that. And by and large, as I go around the country, I'm picking up farmers really want to improve their lot. Now, at home, to improve our soil, I've written down some of the things we're trying to do. We're trying to bring in cover crops to try and improve the organic matter in our soil. We're trying to um, take in local farmyard manure from a, a local dairy farm. Again, trying to build the organic matter. And as I said earlier on, though, no one size fits all. And a little caveat here, we've heard it here and I've heard it at other places I've spoken about uh, minimal cultivation, uh, strip till drills. We use, we use all at home, and we have done. I spoke at another conference alongside an organic farmer, and he was terrified that he said, if we go down this route, you'll destroy my organic farm. He actually relied on ploughing in his rotation. For his soil type, it worked. He didn't have runoff. So just remember, no, one size doesn't fit all. How am I doing for time? You're okay. Yeah. Another picture. <laughs> delivering, <laughs> delivering environmental public goods alongside a viable business. Now, this is the challenge. But through the right advice uh, and support mechanism, environmental deliveries can very much be integrated into the farm business. Now, I, I've actually taken it out because I didn't want to be too negative and damaging. And I've talked to someone already today about uh, what we call the current agri-environment scheme, um, countryside stewardship. And I'm sure if you're an AOB, you've all had farmers in your areas who wanted to know go in or not go in. So I don't really want to touch on that. My gut feeling is that Going forward, it's going to get better. It's just going to take a while to get there. Um, for example, uh, it, needs to, it very much needs to be clear, though, how a farm can get into these schemes. 
And going forward, a scheme needs to be simpler for the farmer to engage with the offer, a fair reward for participation, and it needs to fit with the farming system on that particular farm, and not against it. It needs to be clear to the farmer how the management requirements actually contribute to the environmental objectives required. And I've written it alongside this. And at the bottom line, they need to get paid regularly as well. Uh, I went to um, the Yorkshire Dells recently for a conference and met some farmers there. Uh, and there's one lady who had great things she was trying to do for the environment. She'd had to stop. She'd run out of money. Um, she didn't have any money left. The bank wouldn't lend her any more money, and she hadn't been paid by Natural England. So please, please, make that plea. Feed it back. We need money. It costs money to do these things. Now, with the right advice and support, farmers will very much deliver goods desired. In 2014, uh, there were some 270,000 hectares managed voluntarily under a scheme called Campaign for the Farmed Environment. CFE providing advice agreed by the industry in environmental groups like the RSPB and the Wildlife Trust. Now, through agri-environment schemes, some 30,000 kilometres of hedgerows have been planted and restored, providing habitat and shelter for a range of wildlife. Some 30, 37,000 kilometres of um, grass margin planted. Our own farm at home, as I said earlier, the whole farm has grass margins. Uh, and over the years, we've tried to improve those by putting fluorescently enhanced margins around. And it's, it takes a long time, but we are seeing the benefit. The margins are getting better, the hedges are getting better. But as it takes time, and it takes time to encourage farmers. Farmers come and look at what we've done and attempt to do a little bit themselves. Farmers are already delivering public goods. And if you want farmers to do something differently, then it has to make sense on the farm and be practical. If you want to engage with farmers more, then you need to value what they're already doing. Farmers manage the very landscape that make up the AOMVs. They graze and crop the land, creating this patchwork, patchwork, I've got it here, patchwork of <coughs> fields that the visitors see as they come to the AOMVs. They maintain the hedges and the stone wall that some areas are in ankle. And I'd almost tie this into the previous speaker's talk about feeling good as well. You get people come out to the country, they like to see that, and they like to come out to the Airbnbs, and it's something I've talked about in other places as well. It's tying what we've heard already. Some of we've got to tie in some of the rural people to see the value of that, to get them out there, but somehow the clever bit is to get some income tied into it as well. Now we'll leave that bit for someone else to solve, but that, if we can do that, what, I mean, I like the example of Exeter. Why is Exeter growing? So why are some big industry, the Met Office has moved there, why are they there? It's got good road structure. But there's more to it than that. It's the, it's the environment around them. You've got Dartmoor, you've got some classic landscapes. So somehow we've got to tie that industry into where it's there. If we can get an income stream from potentially some of those industries to pay back. It's sort of a bit of blue sky thinking, but we're at that sort of time now with Brexit to start thinking about things differently, as we've heard already. And it's my, I'm going to chuck that one in for you to think about it. As I said, I'm absolutely rubbish at PowerPoint, um, so you have to put up with me turning the pages and getting the pages wrong. <laughs> if you want farmers to change what they're doing, you need to understand how that fits with their farming businesses. They're very much not going to do something that affects another part of their business, increasing wood burden, for example, and ultimately leading to more chemicals to get rid of it. If you want farmers to deliver more sustainably for different public goods, then it has to be simple and deliverable. We often see the word sustainable farming used. We've heard it today. It means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. It has to fit with the business structure that makes business sense. With the current uncertainties facing farmers created by Brexit, you must allow businesses to change and respond to the market. We don't know what the markets will be, we don't know what a government's going to be tomorrow, let alone the markets. Um, so you've got to allow us to be flexible, to change as and when. <coughs> but we all want, what we all want is viable farm businesses that continue to manage the landscape valued by so many for the future generation of ourselves as farmers, as you, as environmentalists and people who come out into the countryside. And they continue to deliver 
many public goods that we all desire. Thank you very much. Thank you.